Okay, today we're going to be making up some of my special mixture of snake food that I used to tube feed some of the snakes with. Again, I, this is probably a 25 year recipe um, that I've been doing this and it works very well. First thing I start off with is some lean, very lean ground turkey. Um, this is ShopRite's turkey. It's a uh, see how lean it is. It's 85. Shouldn't have cut it first. Should have read it before I opened it up. It's um, it doesn't say on this particular one. Uh, but I like to keep it about 85-90% lean. Uh, it's very lean ground turkey. And we just plop that right in the food processor. Jump all the rest of the juices in there. One egg. And we do that raw. A lot of people say, what well, do you cook this first? No, we don't cook this because if you snakes don't eat cooked food in the wild. So we don't cook it. We're gonna make this mixture. Then what I do is I take some repti vitamins and in my specific measuring amount. I sprinkle some in there. Again, I make it different every time because um, what a snake eats, his diet's very varied and I'm not going to make his diet the same every time here. So it's going to be a varied diet. I'll get maybe more vitamins this time than he did last time or maybe I get less vitamins. It really doesn't matter. Um, but this has worked, like it says, for the last 20-25 years, the snakes grow really well on it. And then I take uh, approximately, this is, I don't know what this is. I guess it's like 16 ounces of water, I believe. What I'll do is I'll start the food processor. And I'll dump this whole glass in right away. take that off. Now if you make it too thick you can always add a little bit of water into the thing and stir it up with this. Um, this is pretty much the consistency that I'm looking for. I don't want it too watery. Um, if it is a little too watery um, tomorrow when I take it out of the refrigerator I put in it, put this in the refrigerator what I don't use today. And tomorrow when I take that out of the refrigerator, it will actually be thickened up a little more. And basically that's how I make the, uh, the food that I'm going to two feed the snakes with. Okay, and then what I have here is uh, I have my 60cc syringe. And I'll dip it into the food here, make it a little lubricate the rubber there, put that in, stir it up really good. And this is what's left from the last batch I made. I'm going to stir that up real good in there. And then I simply pull it back and I'll push it out so that it fills up the tube right here so there's no air up in the syringe, which really doesn't hurt us anything. I mean, if you get air in the in a reptile's stomach, it's not, it's not like getting air in a, a blood vein or anything. Um, and we're just going to fill this up. This 
looks like we got enough in left in this one to get a nice tube full. I'll just wipe off the edge here. Okay. Now this is a old drill press, works very well. What I did was this is airline tube from a fish aquarium. Um, but when I would push this into the snake's mouth, and that's what I used to do, um, sometimes I felt that this is a little rough and I didn't want to hurt the snake. Um, you couldn't do it, just do it very carefully. Well, what I did was I got a dosing needle tube, which is a ball tip, so this won't hurt them at all. And I have uh, electrical taped it onto the, the air tube. Problem when I did this, though, is that this is a very thin orifice here. So it makes it extremely hard to push the plunger in. Um, so with this here, like again, this is just an old drill press. Um, and going back, you know, to school, using levers and stuff, which are in gears, which reduce the amount of pressure you have to put on. This um, will, will allow me to easily push the food through this little orifice without straining. And um, kind of like devised it after quite a few different tries. Um, the tube slips through a little hole, it goes through this rubber band, and then it goes down through here. And now I take the rubber band and I will wrap it around the handle. And I will pull it up here. Now what the rubber band does is every once in a while you get a little piece of uh, meat or something that's not ground up enough that'll plug up the needle. And as you're pushing it, if it blocks it up, it'll actually cause this tube to be blown out and then it'll shoot food all over the place. So we don't want that to happen. So what I did was, of course, I used that rubber band, which helps to keep the food in place, uh, keep the food tube in place here. Now the other thing I've done, and again, this is all makeshift, this is something that just comes as problems arise and I try to fix them, is the hole here where the drill would have been mounted to was too big, obviously, for this. So I actually took a hole saw and I clamped it into there, and the hole saw had a smaller hole here, which this tube fits right up into, and then this will set right here. And then when I pull down on this, it pushes onto the tube, pushes the food through, and I just right now just want to fill up this tube here and it shows me now that I have like 53 cc's of food. One of the drawbacks to using this drill press type of method, sorry I got my hand up in the way there, is the simple fact is that it doesn't have a complete um, push all the way down. It won't push 60 cc's of food. When I push it down it'll go up to about 25. So at which point I have made a block here and I turn this block and I'll lift it and I'll set it up on the block to push out the remainder 25 of food. Um, this works really well. It's not as hard as it seems. Uh, once you get the knack of it, um, it's a very simple process to do. And you will see me um, tube feeding a couple of the snakes today with this. And hopefully uh, if it's something you need to do, um, this will work out really good for you as well. This is one of the monocle cobras, <coughs> and he's actually taken to rubbing his nose raw. So in the other video I showed you what I had done. I taken the screen lid and I put clear packing tape completely over the screen lid here so that he couldn't get and rub his nose anymore on it. So today we're going to get him out of here. Lift up his hide, and he's right there. You can see him looking at us. And we're gonna do what we always do with our cobras. We're gonna hook him. Get another hand underneath him here. Take him out. Oh, took a nice little shot at me here. Look at him. He wants to bite me. We're not gonna let him know he's pretty cool. And we're just gonna stick him right in here. In a holding container while I clean his enclosure, and then I'll come back and feed him for you. Now we're going to take and put him back into his clean enclosure. And always take, which 
I know you can't see me doing right now, but taking the lid off toward me, I'm going to hook him. Same technique we just did to take him out. Get him up toward more of the front of the body, and he will just hopefully crawl right into here with no problem. Get a little tail in there. Oh, oh. Okay, but now it's time for him to eat. So, uh, get his mouse out. everything I defrost it all together so I got a, a rat and a mouse and everything to frost in there so this thing smells like a whole bunch of different kind of critters and we're gonna see if we can get him here to make sure he sees the mouse is here he's usually a good eater not normally a problem once he identifies the fact that we got a mouse here I dropped it here we go let him know it's here Gonna take it from me? Huh? You gonna take your mouse? Come on. Here you go, take it. There you go. And he's grabbed his mouse and he'll definitely eat that with no problem. And I'm gonna put him back on the shelf and go to the next one. Sorry, Egyptian Cobra and I got him a while ago, and he hasn't eaten by himself ever since I got him. He's always has to been um, force fed or tube fed. I used to tube feed him, now I force feed him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out of here right now so I can take care of his enclosure. And then I'm going to tube him. As you can see, he's right there. He's ready to go. Makes his lame attempts to try to get at me. So with him I just kind of want to help him force him down a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to move under his hood right like that. I don't like really to hold him like, restrain him like I have him here. And you can see it's not really what I like to do. It makes him a little madder, but that's how he just ended up today, so that's what we're going to do. And now he's in the re the other enclosure, we're going to clean him out. I'm going to get him in a tube, and then I'm going to show you how we force feed him uh, two hoppers. Okay, now I'm going to already tube the the snake. And what I'm going to do is I got two frozen thawed hoppers here, and we're just simply going to get him to open his mouth. By rubbing the nose onto his onto his nose, aggravate him a little bit. Won't take much. He should open his mouth in a minute here. There he goes. Once he opens his mouth, I can get the head in there. Okay, and then I just slowly maneuver the mouse. In there now a lot of times so when you do this um, it's not just a matter of pushing it from the top you have to work it from the bottom a little bit push in from the both sides just a little bit get like a leg in there if a leg is sticking out move over here get this leg and what you'll do is just continue to do this until the mouse at some point We'll just start to push in nice and easy. And we're working back and forth, top and bottom. Working from the bottom here now. We'll go from the top a little bit. Okay. Work over on this side. We got a leg over here. And as we keep working back and forth, top and bottom, just pushing nice and gently. We'll get to a point where the mouse, just like right here, is just sliding 
in nice and easy and you will continue to just keep pushing and I push it way down into the belly and I'll pull back and we got a second mouse here and we're going to do the same thing again a lot of times once you get the first mouse in the second one's a little bit easier sometimes uh, don't look like today he's going to make that the case so we're going to try to get him to open his mouth again usually he's willing to open his mouth because he wants to bite me you kind of know when it's your fingers and when it's food he's giving me a little bit more of a hard time but I will aggravate him enough that he will open his mouth up again and again, it's not forcing it, you just, you know, nice and gently, there he goes. And again here, actually this is pretty good. I went in pretty far so far. I get this side here, push a little more. Go to the other side, push a little bit. Go to the bottom, underneath is lower just above his lower jaw there go back up to the top and again now it's going in nice slow easy push get it way in there take that out and he has been successfully force fed two nice hoppers and we're going to put him back in his enclosure Okay, this is a, a Bavarian that I got, one of my rescues that came in. Uh, this is one of the front opening, which I hate front opening, especially for anything venomous. And uh, right now I just opened it up. Uh, when I got this, first of all, let me take, when I got this, um, they had a, uh, it has that plastic Bavarian screen, cheap screen top on it. And they melted it with a light bulb. I mean, they had a 250 watt red light bulb in a 100 watt fixture, number one. Uh, they melted it, um, but I was able to force, firstly, it's the size of 40 breeder. Just take a, get a nice 40 breeder screen top like I have here. I uh, use the uh, um, ratchet straps to hold it on there nice and tight. So it does make a decent one. I'm not a big fan of this, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. All right now I just got to change his water bowl which is right here. I'm not really change it but give him some fresh water and clean it. He's right over here. He's a little black rat snake. He's over in the corner. And we're going to get him some fresh water. And a lot of times I do something you really shouldn't do which is leave open a cage like this and walk away but he's harmless. And just his bedding is all good. Um, what I'm going to do is hopefully he'll do this for us. You can see he's back over here in the corner. Make sure that you guys can get a good view of that. Pull this forward here and turn this just a little bit more so you can see him. He's back over here. Now you look at him, you see how he's all s up there a little bit and not very happy. Now if this was a venomous snake, i got to pull him out forward. Um, if I try to reach in there right now, you see, look at him. He's zeroing in on me. He wants to strike at me. All right. If that was a venomous snake, that would be a very bad situation. So I'm going to try to like pull him forward. I'm trying to aggravate him, trying to do it as nicely as possible. But you can see I'm making him mad. Look at him. He's he's not a he's not happy. Now the only way for me to get at him, if he was a venomous snake, is to actually let him kind of like come out of here. I don't know. Oh, look at him. See him mess up. Look at him trying to bite me here. This would be not a good situation. That's why I think guys who keep venomous snakes and front opening enclosures are nuts. Um, you've seen many videos of these guys coming out. Hey, look at him. 
He's looking to attack me. He's not happy. You watch me take my snakes out of the top with no problem. With this guy, I have an issue right now. Look, he wants to strike at me. So I have to get him, drag him out of here, potentially have him go to the floor, which I don't want, to have to deal with him. So that's why I personally hate the front opening enclosures. I would prefer this to be a top opening enclosure where I can deal with him on my terms. You see him trying to take a strike at me there? Deal with him on my terms and not deal with him on his terms. I've got an adoption snake here. This is an albino gopher snake. And again, I just slightly restrain their heads and I have a kitchen spatula which is attached to a piece of wood. It'll simply open their mouth very easily. Slide the dosing tube in. And I'll push it way in there. Okay, and then I clamp my fingers around. I feel the head of the tube here. Clamp my fingers around the snake. I treat them like they're a tube. And he gets 20 cc, so I grab the handle. I pull it down. I get 20 cc's in there. Now I keep my fingers a little snug around the tube as I pull it out. And I get it right out of his mouth here. And I slowly just run my finger, or ARA finger, down his belly, which helps to push the food down a little bit farther. And as you can see, he doesn't object, he doesn't fight me very much. A very simple, easy way of feeding him, get, making sure that he eats all year long. Um, there is no off cycles, plus it's extremely cheap to uh, feed them this way. So if I need to and the snake's not eating, I can tube feed him. Um, or if I just have, like I do a lot of snakes and I need to keep my costs down, I'll tube feed them. And if they decide they don't want to eat for me for whatever reason or they're sick, I can tube feed them and uh, they won't lose any weight. Here we have a Pueblo milk snake, one of the other milk snakes we use that has a mimic of the uh, coral snake. And we use it in our shows to show people the, the patterns like red to, red touches black, these bands, so venom black. This is obviously a non-venomous snake. If red would touch yellow, but these are actually beige, but if the red would touch the yellow bands, then that also would indicate that that possibly could be a coral snake. Um, again, you'll see here, hopefully, that it's, they really don't fight you too much. Um, very simple process here. He gets 30 cc's of food. And just very quickly do this. 30 cc's of food now is inside my snake. I run my finger along his belly. Pull out the tube. And if you watch, he's not looking to attack me. He's not mad at me now. He's very fine. And we'll go put him back in his enclosure and he's all fed up for the day. Here we got another adoption. It's an albino corn snake. It's lacking all the black darker pigments on him. A very beautiful corn snake. Uh, again, all our adoptions are up for adoption for $30 unless there's some additional charge. And if you can see here, very simple again. Most of the snakes do not fight you uh, when you go to tube feed them. There are exceptions. Ball pythons tend to be a pain in the butt. Of course, they tend to be a pain in the butt with everything. Um, but those that probably one of your few snakes that'll give you a little bit of a hard time when you try to go a tube feed them. All the other ones are pretty simple. And again, see how quick and easy that is. He's all fed up. No fighting. No arguing. No nothing. And as I said before, sometimes your ball pythons can be a real pain in the butt when you have to do anything close to their mouth. Uh, but one of the things with them, I'm getting here to grab them here, is that I don't really even have to use this. I can just pull down a little bit on his lower jaw and they will open up for you no problem and we pump 30 cc's into this guy as well voila all done and a little 
bit of rubbing right here on his belly push the food through there and he's still a happy camper see he's not mad at me he's not trying to bite me and this guy's nickname is actually nippy because the guy who surrendered him to me told me that he was a very aggressive snake and would always try to bite you as you can see that's not the case here All right, <clears throat> now I got a, a uh, baby northern water snake. I've actually had this snake now. It's been two pets since it was born. Um, it's uh, about a year and a half old now. They grow slower but healthy when they're uh, tube fed. And what really annoys me is today I looked on a forum and it says how to force feed um, a snake and then it shows this guy um, force feeding a baby desert horn viper um, he cut the leg off of a mouse which is fine but then he attempts and, and goes to um, pin this little head down this venomous head down and with his bare hands he's holding this venomous snake and he's shoving this leg with tweezers into the snake's mouth very very dangerous because when you're holding behind a the head their heads often can slip back um, not something he should have been showing um, I always when I do any venomous feedings whatsoever that are forced tubes or otherwise they're always in restraining tubes but there's really no reason that you have to do that because even the smallest baby snake um, I don't, well I should say the smallest garter snakes are really small but um, when you get into a lot of the, the snakes like the corn snakes and stuff you can tube feed them from birth so if they won't eat um, you can get this in their mouth um, this guy here is a good example um, I'll show you a few more of my, my tube feedings um, when we get into some of the smaller baby snakes I have right now as you can see he opens his mouth up no problem we put it in there give him exactly the right amount of food that he should have and right there and again just hold close my fingers a little bit around him as I pull it out so the food stays in give his belly a little rub and he's all good to go and you can see for a water snake this guy is extremely uh, handleable he doesn't try to bite um, and I think that has a lot to do with from the fact that from birth he's been handled and tube fed so he doesn't know any reason why to want to try to bite and strike at me um, most of my snakes that are tube fed are very very docile snakes last snake we have for you today is actually an adoption snake it just came in it came in this nice little five and a half um, gallon tank uh, the only thing that I disapproved of when it came in was that it had no clips whatsoever to keep the lid on so I I taped the lid down temporarily As you know, these guys will uh, push these lids right off of here without any problem whatsoever but it is a pretty cute little setup here. It's a um, banana king snake, which is a California uh, king snake. He's got brown bands with yellow bands. Very cool looking. They got some nice little plants and a vine and a water dish in here. And I'm not sure what a hermit crab shell is doing in here, but that's all right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually move him today into this here. Um, and what this is is this is our seal tight tubs that we keep all our adoption snakes in and some of our non venomous snakes and we'll just set him in there give him a little water we'll make sure we put a label on him and we got him on our feeding schedule already and this guy will be ready for adoption. So if you're looking for a California banana style king snake, here you go. He's a nice little beautiful one. Uh, I just came in the other day. Like I said, this is the first time I've had a chance to get him into something. And the way I always know, if you ever come into the snake room, the way you're always going to know is what's for adoption. See if you can see this here. Is it always got a, a dot here? which is a uh, pinkish reddish dot and that means that those snakes are for adoption so I hope you like this uh, 
episode of Snake Clips. If you like what you saw, please hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more um, and see whenever we put up new videos, which we've been doing quite a bit of lately, uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, we really appreciate that, that you're watching our channel. And uh, just like I said, keep it real and have a great day, guys.